What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Armchair GM Sports Network, and welcome back to the NHL 21 GMO Commentary Series with the Seattle Kraken. We are here at the beginning of the 2024-2025 season. If you guys missed any of the other videos in the series, go check them out. They are live on the channel now. Hit the like button, leave me your comments, and subscribe to the channel, most importantly of all. And, uh, yeah, so we're here at the beginning of the 2024 season, 2025, and uh, if you've seen the last video, I mentioned here at the end that maybe we should change the coach, and I kind of did some pre-scouting. There really wasn't too many coaching uh, coaches available, but the coaching staff that I do want to uh, do want to change out is the assistant and uh, associate coach because I didn't like their grade, didn't like their their chemistry. I found that like I went through the uh, coaching free agency and found that we can get better. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let them go as of this moment here. So let go of the associate and the assistant. And I'm going to hire uh, two of them. And I've already written down the names who I'm going to be targeting. So for associate coach, his last name was Devos right here. So I'll show you guys uh, him before I make his, uh, a signing. So overall grade, pretty good B. He's good on offense and defense with the A grades. A for penalty kill, which is great. Not so much for pe power play, but we have the head coach for that. And he's got a B minus for coach influence. And uh, if you see here, 71% team fit, which is the best out of all the associate coaches. So uh, I'm going to make a offer for Mr. Dave Devos, Pierre Devos. Um, get it to like a mill. I think that'll be good for four years. So associate coach offer contract. And now the assistant coach. And the last name here, if I can find him. There he is, Mayor. Only a C grade, but uh, most importantly, he's got B for power plays. That'll help on the power play end for assistant coaches. And he's got 71% team fit. So both of them have a better team fit than the other previous associate and assistant coach. So I'll give him also a four-year contract and see if we can get it up to at least a mil here. Or at least a little bit before. Maybe 850000 we can actually get him to. So let's offer Marcos Mayor and uh, Dav Devo some contracts. I already offered a contract to an NH or AHL assistant coach uh, while I was scouting because we did need one. So, um, what's this? Ooh, we kind of need someone in its place. Okay. Um, hmm. Can we just make the goalie coach and demote him back to goalie coach after? So if we made him just the assistant coach for now, okay, yeah, and then we'll make him back the goalie coach after. So uh, we will, eh, God, hopefully that doesn't screw anything up. Um, it might, the one guy might say they already have someone in the position, so we might have to go re-sign. So let's just advance a couple of days here and, um, okay, so we got the AHL guy. Okay, so it's Marcos Mayer, so we have to go back in and offer contract to Marcos Mayer. Um, so we got Devos for sure. Let's just quickly go over to coaching staff. Put back Mr. Des Roche to goalie coach, NHL goalie coach. So now we can get, um, what was his name? Mayor. He was an assistant, I believe. I don't think anyone would have signed him. Nope. Let's just give him a contract again. Four years. And he said he would have accepted it, so at least get to the 800,000 mark. There we go. Offer contract. And I don't think we have to do anything else. Nope. So uh, while that will be taken care of, I'll show you guys the lines. I went through the lines and done all the lineups too before I started the video, so less time working on that. So obviously, Besser, Strom, Lane, our number one line, going to keep it the same. Uh, I do have Bootlin, Johansson, and Guryanov as our second line. And then I put Bjorkstrand, Pedersen, and Tokarski together on the third line. The reason for the switch is if you take a look at Johansson, his best fit is going to be line one. So he'll be Ryan Strom's replacement whenever that may be. I mean, Strom's 31 years old, two years left at 5 mil. You know what? We can probably write out his contract, and then Johansson can just slip right in there because we still get a plus three. And Tokarski is a center right winger, and if you see his chemistry fit, works better on the third and fourth line, which, again, we could look into next season at changing the coaches if this year doesn't really go well. But um, we'll go with what the lines we have now. It really does suck for Bulen because he's our franchise player. Like, I'd like to have a coach that he schemed fit in the first two lines because... 
obviously as a franchise player he's 87 now at 19 he's just going to go up and he's probably going to be like a 90 he's probably going to reach 95 i'm going to say potential eventually so you know i kind of want a 95 overall player playing in your top six rather than your bottom six and not getting enough time so um i do want to look at a coach that kind of uh does help boost bootland johansson and tokarski most of all um so that's our future of our teams i'd love for petterson but i you know what at this point man we can probably do without petterson if we do need to trade him um he can also be a key asset for that and then we have our grinder th uh, fourth line that was recommended two videos ago we got kyle clifford juju rkara and a gear garnett hathaway with the plus three chemistry <laughs> going to be we are we're gonna be that team with the the young talent up front and then we have the big guys the, the gritty guys in the back end to protect the kids so uh, I think that's a pretty good uh, game plan. And here's our decor. Um, I, you know what? With the decor, still unsure what to exactly do. Sergachev kind of sucks because maybe the new coach would help him scheme fit in line one or two. So hopefully we'll find someone with that because I'd love for Sergachev to be up there with Johansson and Nurse in the top six, and then we work with the other three. Um, but uh, we will see what happens because we have. Uh, this decor as we have it right now if you look at our ahl squad we have pelich and yonkman on the way both an offensive and defensive defensemen who are two prospects right now medium top four and i believe the other one's low elite so uh hopefully they get a boost in the ahl as well i got them playing together with a plus three chemistry uh, we also have willie martin who's a low elite we could keep an eye on him maybe he does develop maybe he doesn't so we shall see but uh as for all the other lines, uh, power play, still got the plus three and the plus one here. I couldn't get a plus five. I tried a lot of different combinations, but uh, I couldn't remember the one either from last season or if we even had one last season. Man, I do so many GM modes that I don't, I don't even remember if which one had a plus five or not. But I have this so far. I think that's uh, good enough. Uh, I got a plus one with the four-man power play penalty kill. We got a plus one with the second penalty killing unit. Uh, I couldn't, I tried every different combination for this uh, second three-man penalty kill. And you can see all of them fit in the scheme, but somehow it's still a negative one. So I really wasn't sure what else to do there. So I just kept it as it is. Uh, goalies, obviously, we're going to roll with Holpe and Zarkov. I'm hoping Zarkov actually gets some boost throughout the season. Being a high elite, high elites usually do get boost throughout the season. He's got an, a good enough stats to hopefully do great as a backup. And then we have the veteran goalie there and Braden Holpe, 35 years old. Eight overall still has the exact elite potential, so that's good to see as well. And we have him for two years, so uh, hopefully he can help groom Zarkov into our starting goalie. Other than that, AHL lineups, there you go, just for anyone that wants to see. There you go. Tage Thompson's also a guy we can use as a trading asset, but we have all our uh, low elite and low top six, whatever, low top nine guys, the, the rookies playing such as like Holton Dak, Yulanov, Radulov, Day. You, Radulov, I'm hoping getting a big boost this year. Um, Lanya, I brought down there as well. I know he's a 79 in depth forward, but you know what? Playing line one in the AHL, still good enough for him, and hopefully he boosts up there, Alan McShane. All right, so those are the lines. We can get into some simulation. Um, hmm. I don't think we have to do anything else. Uh, we do need to get that one coach. Okay, so I did. Uh, okay, I, I did. I thought I offered a. Uh, a contract in free agency at defenseman. So Kalen Addison is actually a 24 year old medium top four and he was an RFA sitting in free agency. So I signed him right away just to get into the AHL. You never know. I mean, 24, he could, he could uh, grow. I mean, that, that'd be a steal. I signed him to a three year, $900,000 contract too. So, you know what? Let's get him into the lineup here. So I believe, yeah, he's an offensive defenseman, which does help. Um, and he's 78 overall. He does fit on line one. Okay, so we do get a plus three. Okay, so that could help Yonkman for sure. Pelich, it kind of sucks though. So if we can move Pelich at least into here, so we can at least get a plus one chemistry with Wallman. So he'll at least get a help boost there, and then Martin will play with Brooke there on the last pairing there. But at least we got Addison and Yonkman together. Um, two, uh, uh, an offensive and a defensive defenseman. That could help Yon uh, Yonkman a lot. Who is 19 at 75 medium top four and then we got 78 24 year old so kid allison actually could you know get a pretty good growth this year and could actually be an asset for us if he does fit with the new coach that we're about to get he's got decent stats for an offensive defenseman so if he can grow that's you know 
low risk, high reward. And look at this. So we have him three years at 975. So if he does grow next year, I mean, we have him for two years at 975, which is amazing. So took a chance on him. We'll see what happens. Uh, other than that, don't need to do anything else. We can just sim on through to the beginning of the regular season. Actually, let's get that coach signed. So we got, there we go, Marcos Mayer. So just quickly, quickly take a look at the coaching staff now. So we got, obviously, Matsir as the uh, offensive uh, head coach. Then we got uh, Davos and Mayer as our assistant and associate coach. I think this coaching staff probably will do a lot better. I'm guessing that they'll do a lot better. So um, if we take a look at, like, their grades, I mean, besides um, – Marcos Mayer, like our our head coach and assistant coach, have pretty good coaching size. I mean, even Devos could probably take over as head coach, to be honest, if you know we decide to move on from Matt from Matthew or Mathieu, as you know the French would say. Uh, so we'll have to see. We'll have to keep an eye on both of these guys, and then we have Mayer as the assistant coach to help out as well. Um, other than that, don't need to do anything else. Let's just sim it to the regular season. Now I'm debating on whether to take it month by month here. Or to just sim on through and do, you know, the funny, you know, the, where we got like the, the funny, like the, the, the sound clip I have. I always forget what it's called, but uh, I kind of want to take it month by month because right now we're sort of sure. We're sort of unsure. We're like in between as to what this team is. Like, are they a guaranteed playoff team every year? We've made some changes and, you know, it could work out, could not work out. We definitely got to take a look. And see what our team is all about. So I think I'm going to take it month by month for this video. So we might, the most of the, the nah, sorry, I can't even talk English today. <laughs> most of the time in this video, or most of this video, will just feature us simming month by month till we get to the deadline. I think I will end it there. So we'll see what the time is at when we get to that point. So here we go. We're at the beginning of the regular season, first game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, so let's just go sim month by month here and we need to do Ooh, we kind of like a rough preseason i guess it doesn't really matter so 14th let's go to the next month at the 14 mark perfect there's no game there so let's just take a look and see what happens in the first month we've a big 6-4 opening night win which is always good to see good for the fans so two games already in we're two and oh so let's continue on and see what happens so we have three home games to start the season and then we have four road games right after. And so far, so good. So let's just continue on here. There's another win against the Islanders. Vancouver Canucks are arch rivals. 6-1 loss to the Vancouver Canucks. That is harsh to see against the arch rivals. Into the month of November now. Starting off against Winnipeg and Nashville. Back-to-back -back games. Back-to-back -back losses. Not a good look. And a shootout loss to the Ottawa Senators. I have to, I'm going to keep an eye on the shootout in overtime games too. Because if we need to improve those, it's always good to go in and switch the lineups around to see what works. So right now, we're not too good in the uh, extra time. As I say that, we had another shootout loss and an OT win. So 8-5-2 in the first month. Not the greatest, not the best. And are so not the worst, not the greatest. So we're kind of like in between there. So, but Brock Besser with 26 points in 15 games is what I like to see. We're sitting in third place, a point behind or ahead of the Sharks, two points behind uh, the Ducks, and three points ahead of the Flames, and only two points behind the Oilers, and three points behind the Canucks. So a very very tight division so far. Um, Besser with uh, 26 points, that's pretty good. You know, let's keep it. Let's keep track of the stats as we go along here. So Besser, Strom, and Lonnie obviously leading the way and leading the team in points. That's what I like to see. Bjorkstrand, Tokarski, Sergich, or no, sort by forwards here. Uh, Bjorkstrand, Tokarski, Bootland. All right. Yuryanov, Pedersen, Kiara. So how is that fourth line doing? They're actually a plus, which is incredible. <laughs> and, they're, and they're producing stats. They have a combined 10 points, <laughs> which I'm actually amazed by. <laughs> so I will give them credit. And Johansson is struggling on that second line my god only one point is a negative one maybe we need to switch out nicholas johansson he might be a guy we look to switch take a look at a d side it looks like honka and capo Biano are, are are struggling on that second pairing not what i like to see everyone else is doing okay goalie wise yikes zarkov and holby what is happening that's not good. I mean, hope you with a better record, but save percentage and goals against average. Yikes. 
what's happening there? Please improve on that. Please improve on that. Okay. So, um, let's just take a look at the lines. Let's switch out Johansson because he is struggling on that second line. So, maybe we switch out him and Tokarski. Let's switch him out. Let's try and see what works with that. Uh, I'm not going to touch the first line. Second line, we'll keep the same as well. And we'll keep the the uh, fourth line there. So, Cabiano and Ahanka are struggling here. So, Zaboral plus three and a plus four with Johansson. Sergachev plus eight and plus. Okay, so we're not going to touch the last D pairing. We could switch up the top four. So, if we took out Zaboral, no, still we lose the plus three. But we do gain it if we put. Oh, God. If we put Haka, if Zaboro and Capo Bianco are our first D pairing, I don't know how that's going to go. If we take out Capo Bianco, I don't think we have anybody scratched. No, we do not. And we have no one to bring up at the current moment. So we look like we'd have to go and acquire somebody. So for now, we'll keep it. We'll try it out. Maybe it'll work. Maybe not. Like, again, they're both going to be playing like 83 overalls. And then we got an 85 and an 82 here. So not too bad. So let's just give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. You know, we switched Tokarski and Johansson. Maybe that'll help. Johansson, Tokarski already doing great. So uh, hopefully he just boosts up Butlin and Giryanov there. So let's give that a shot. So let's advance another month. We went 8, 5, and 2 in the first month. Let's keep track of the next month and see how we do so 14th there let's go to the 14th the following month which is a game against the rangers so let's sim up to there and see how we do all right so beginning of the second month how do we do big win against chicago 5-3 edmonton oilers 4-2 okay so two wins off the bat good to see there so let's continue on boys big 5-1 win against the blues capitals ovechkin and are going to ovechkin city losing 3-1 big games against boston and pittsburgh here on the road Big win against Bruins, a shutout win, and a shootout win. I forgot to do the lineups, but it looks like it didn't need to. Another win against LA, Tampa Bay. What? <laughs> Did that say, hang on, 8-7 shootout win. <laughs> oh, man, I was a goal fest. But uh, other than that, it looks like we're on a streak here, boys. So not a bad streak so far. Let's continue on here. So four more games until the stoppage. So OT loss. 4-2 win against the Red Wings, against the Ducks, four, overtime win, and Colorado 4-1 win. So what a month, 26-3. and three. So let's just take a look here. So we went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 1, 9, 1, 1, 10, 1, and 1, 11, 1, and 1, 12. We went 12, 1, and 1 in the second month so yeah we're keeping this lineup together i think 46 points 29 games mr besser thank you very much and look at this first place in the division for the kraken the kraken has been released folks we are on a roll on a roll let's take a look at the stats so far let's see if anybody's improved so besser lonnie strom still leading the way tokarski now, the change with him going from third to second line did great. 17 assists, 5 goals. He's a playmaker, folks. He's not the goal scorer. The goal scorer seems to be Bootlin on that line with 14 goals, 5 assists. So, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, Garyanov, I mean, as a sniper, you'd think he'd have more than 4 goals, but his shooting category is only okay. Uh, Bjorkstrand, though, from the third line, doing great. Uh, Pedersen with 12 points. And look at that fourth line, folks. 10 10 <laughs> combined for 29 points. Oh, boy. I think we're just going to have to keep re signing these guys and keep them as our fourth line. But Johansson, man, struggling. Yikes. And I can't take Strom out. <laughs> that's, that's kind of a predicament with, here, with him here. Yikes. Not sure what to do with him. Uh, defense. Uh, Honka, negative seven. And Capo Bianco is playing with Johansson. So Capo Bianco's plus minus did increase. Honka is still the same. He's now playing with Johansson, I believe, right? Yeah, and it's Capo Bianco and Zaboro. So eh, Honka's just got the, the struggling negative. 
not sure what to do else with him. Let's take a look at the goalies. There we go. So it, for sure, Zarkov has improved in save percentage. Right now in 9-12, 2-26 goals against average. He's only played four games, though. As Holpe is taking, or five games, Holpe is taking the brunt of the work with a 9-0-3 save percentage, 2-92. So both have improved um, stat-wise, which is really good to see. So 26-3. Don't need to make any changes, guys. We just need to keep simming and hopefully continue this roll. Last 10, 9 0 oh, 1. Very, very successful month there. So let's go to January 14th. There we go. And see how we do in the month of December. Usually, uh, I've seen in the NHL in real life, it's not going to transition to video game, obviously. But the month of December could go up and down for teams. I've seen it uh, where teams just, you know, sh sh like shit the bed and tank. And I've seen other teams still continue the successful uh, run. So, so far, as I'm saying, Tank, we did lose three games in a row there, which is not great. But we're back on the winning side here. Um, loss to Carolina. So, not a great month of December. Let's get into January here. Hopefully, we have a, a better month. One and one so far in January against the Golden Knights here. It should be a win. We lose 2-1. That is a game you should not lose, especially with their record there. Um... Yeah, it looks like we're very inconsistent now. We just we went from a big streak to a very inconsistent pace. So 25, 14, and 3. Uh, not a next good or third month there. Not a good month. So, yeah, Oilers went right past us. But we are still in second place by a lot of points, which is good to see. Um, let's just quickly look, take a look at the stats and see what's been going down. Okay, let's go to forward. So, Besser, Lonnie Strom, obviously, our top line. Uh, Tokarski up to 30 points, which is good to see. We do getting some negatives now. So, our bottom six is starting to drop off. Uh, Bootland, though, up to an 88 overall. So, he's still growing 19 goals. Um, hmm. Yeah, look, our, our fourth line is just completely dropped off at the plus minus now. Something's happened, and I'm not sure what it is. Um, yeah, Honka, wow. Negative 14. We might have to replace Honka. That is not good. That is not good. He's literally almost bringing down the whole defense. Yikes. Maybe, I mean, he works best chemistry-wise in the bottom. I'm not moving Sergachev and Nurse. Like, they're doing just fine. So, we may have to move on from Julius Honka. Yeah, it's brought down Zarkov's like save percentage and their goals against average are starting to struggle a little bit more now. Okay, um, I think we need to stop this the the not the sim. Yeah, well, we need to stop the simulation and kind of look at defense. Uh, we need to replace Julius Honka at the moment because negative fourteen. If that gets any worse, we're not going to do great uh, when it comes to <laughs> uh, team record wise. So let's player search this. Look for a top four D and see if we can make a move. I think it's time to move on from Mr. Honka. Uh, top four defenseman. And I don't remember what Zabro was. Ooh, shoot. Because I want someone that will work with, uh, with Zabro there. Oh, no, we don't have him there. I think it's with Johansson, right? I think Johansson's a two-way. I think we have like a lot of two ways on this team, which is not a good thing. I'd love to have offensive, defensive. Yeah, he's playing with Johansson, and Johansson's a two way. So Johansson doesn't even work here on uh, on line two, but uh, Capo Bianco and Zaboro have been doing okay together. So I don't want to move them away. So we just need to find someone that can work on line two, preferably, or fits in the top four, so we can move people around. So let's go into player search. All right. So defense top four. I think we'll start with two way. We'll see what we get with the two ways. At least a two star. Let's search. What does it give us? We do have a lot here. Ooh, and a lot of top potential defensemen. Um. Is a top, there's a couple here, but uh, the trade values are, are hurting. So I kind of want to start from the bottom here and go up. So let's just take a look. So Spurgeon, I'm not going to go after him because his contract is horrible. He does fit in the top four, though. If we went after him, I'd probably get them to eat some contract. Or eat some, yeah, eat some contract. But let's take a look. So Myers, three, three. Looking for either a two or a top four. 
a bunch of threes, threes, one, Kim Fowler. Two years, 6.5, not bad. Okay, we'll keep, we'll, we'll come back to Mr. Fowler. We do have Callie Flurry from the Montreal Canadiens. 82 overall, he's been struggling in the halves this year, but he's got 11 points. And his contract is not too bad. So Flurry and Fowler so far look pretty good. And we got Eric Gustafson. On a one-year deal, which is good to see as well. Okay. Let's just keep going here. Oh, we got a two for sure. Travis Dermott. Travis Dermott. From the St. Louis Blues. Four years of 4.7. That is pretty ideal. And he fits with Matthew or Matier's scheme. You know what? It might be Travis Dermott. Or Connor Timmins. I wouldn't mind a Connor Timmins. Oh my god. Yeah, Connor Timmins. I think it's I think it's Timmins so far. I was leaning more towards Dermott, but uh Connor Timmins. Connor Timmins might be him. Oleg Frolov. <laughs> What a name. And, I mean, this guy, probably ideal. I mean, oh, God, he's got really good shot blocking. Look at that shot blocking and stick checking. And his physical stats. Is this guy an enforcer? What is he? The defense two-way? Really? Five years at 4.7. Oleg Frolov. I like Frolov. <laughs> Much more than the others. Do like Frolov? Nah, not Yoki Haru. Trickering. I mean, yeah, but doesn't really. I mean, I, if we're going for a, t a top four so far, be uh, Frolov. But Montour, for sure, line two, and he helps with the penalty kill. Yikes! That contract is not the greatest, though. Not the greatest contract. Top four for Villamaki. I mean, any penalty kill two, top four high. And he's a one year. Okay, okay. You so Valimaki. See you. I do like still Frolov. Not gonna lie, guys. I really like Frolov. Rasmus Sandin from the Leafs. Ooh, man, his puck skills. Okay, yo, Rasmus Sandin. Okay, okay. You know what? If Sandine might have just taken taken it. Might be Sandine. Yeah, and these guys are just yeah. No, I think we're yeah. We reached the end. So Brody. Uh, yeah, Rasmus Sandine. Where is he? Where is he? I mean, did we go through everybody? I don't remember seeing Timothy Lilligren. There he is, Rasmus Sandine. Let's see if we can make a play for him. He's going to the... It's an East team too, which helps. Uh, Rasmus Sandin from the Leafs. Let's see. So, obviously, we'd be throwing Honka the other way. Ooh, oh, they do want, but his trade value has dropped significant. I can't even talk. Significantly. Um, if we take a look at what we can offer them, if we look at these three, Yonkman, obviously, we're, we're looking at keeping. Pelch, we're looking at keeping. Martin, I wouldn't mind wanting to move. You know, I wouldn't mind wanting to move Martin. So let's throw in here him in there as a as a uh, as a, a sweetener. Other than that, not looking to move anybody else here. Tage Thompson, which they do want. We're talking salary cap here. If we can give it to them, we will. Uh, Marta Kanan, low top six playmaker. Kind of want to see how that turns out. Uh, not going to get rid of any of these uh, low elite players. Although fast or park to Kanan. I mean, they're up to twenty two now. They are, this is probably the ideal time if they haven't boosted up yet to trade them. Um, so maybe, I believe, which one's which? Sniper, power forward. I want to keep this. Oh, okay. Uh, who's the sniper? Doesn't I really get sniping stats for a sniper? And Parti Kane's a two way. So I kind of want to throw in the two way. So we'll throw in the two way. Um, centers. Keeping everybody here. 
Uh, Radulov, I want to see how he turns out. Funk, maybe? Low top six. Eh, we'll wait on Stan Funk. We'll wait on the Funk, man. Uh, goalies. Yeah, McPherson, no. Like, McPherson, I want. If Zarkov doesn't pan out, we have a medium elite goalie in the background just in case. So we'll keep him. Um, draft picks. We have a couple of thirds. We can throw in a third. But if we're getting a guy like Sandine, I'm willing to give up the second round pick. So, on all of that, that looks like it could go through. So we're giving up Honka. Giving him a, a low elite defensive prospect, giving him a low elite forward prospect, and the second round pick. Now, we could probably get away with giving him a third instead. So, if we give him the Edmonton Oilers third round pick, I think it still might go through. So, Sandine for Honka, Martin, Park Kanan, and, and uh, the Edmonton Oilers third round pick in 2025. Will that go through? Trade rejected. So, let's take the third out and give him the second. You know, it's weird that they don't want it, but we're giving them a boost in trade value. Does that actually go through this time? It does not. Okay. So, so, if we give them the third this year, give them one of the thirds. Next year, what are we looking at? Draft picks. One, two, three, four. So, we have all the draft picks. Um, if we give them next year's third as well. So, if we give them two thirds, does that have, Does that go through? Okay. So, it does go through. We gave them a third for this year and next year. The two prospects and a Julius Honka, Rasmus Sandin. Welcome to the Seattle Kraken, and let's get you into the lineup, bud. Big trade, near not even close to the deadline. I mean, we're we're catching up to the deadline, but big trade here to help out the team. Let's throw Mr. Sandin into the lineup here. Let's see, we have a plethora of left-handed D on the team or lefty. Ooh, what? Of course he doesn't fit. Okay, he was a top four. That was right. I was right. Let me just. Okay. So. Do we have someone? If we start moving people around here. Okay. Yikes. So Johansson fits more up here. Why do they don't. Maybe it's because they're both two way. If we put Sandine with Sergeyev and there's a plus three, that could help Sandine grow. I'd, I'd, I'd be comfortable with that. And Johansson and Nurse up here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Capobianco might be an odd man out here. No, we don't have another D man here. Oh man, that kind of sucked. That kind of sucked. I'm just gonna try some stuff out here, guys. One moment. Hmm. Hmm. Well, 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 I think. We might have put ourselves into a, or I put ourselves into a predicament here. I think we should probably just go uh, plus ones across the board for the rest of the season. And I'm going to put Sandine and Johansson together, Sergachev and Nurse Zaboral and Capobianco. Hopefully that evens itself out. And that's what I'm hoping for. So now that, that we did make a trade, does it do anything to our power play? So Sandin does not work on the power play, which is unfortunate to say the least. So, who is not in here that probably should be in here? I think you'll... Is Gurionov and Lanier in there? Yeah. 
Bootland, Bjorkstrand. Who am I missing? Oh, Johansson. Is he working power play? Mm, not really. Uh, at this point, then just put a D-man out there. Sandine, I mean, just to get some power play time, that's fine. Um, don't think he's going to do anything. I mean, he gets plus three with playing with Besser, so... Let's throw him up there on the first power play unit so we can have uh, Johansson and Nurse down here. That's fine. Um, now, penalty kill. I know he's a good penalty killer. I know he could fit. So let's take out Zaboro and put Sandine because it said he worked well in our penalty killing lines. And he does. Look at that. Gives it a plus one. So this is actually going to work out to our... Uh, benefit ladies and gents so let's quickly take a look here what if we took out capo bianco and we threw in sandine does that at least get us to zero line chemistry it does not why is up with that second one <laughs> why can't we fix that and we do now so if we move guryanov it looks like guryanov is the problem then <laughs> so we maybe if we take out guryanov and we put capo bianco who did work there we go. Okay, so we got to zero. So that'll help on the penalty killing side um, of things. So um, so we had Johansson and Sandine for line one. And we're going to put Sergachev. We're going to move these guys up. We're going to keep the same lines here. Sergachev and Nurse. Over here. And for continued. Oh, why is Kehara here? Okay, just making sure. And now we can put Zaboro and Campo Bianco. So, hopefully when we find a new coach next year that, that does help. We find someone that helps with the better D chemistry. Is what I'm praying for. So, uh, yeah, let's take out Nurse. I want Sandine to get some time because of his stats. Uh, his puck skill stats is ridiculous. So, I, I think that deserves even line one time. And he'll play with Lonnie and Strom. Pedersen will play with Bootland and Sergachev. And Johansson will play with Besser and Tokarski. Um, shootout lineup. You know what? That looks great to me. Um, let's just shuffle it around, though. Maybe that'll help with winning. And our three-on-three -three line. You know, I've seen some overtime. You know, we'll keep that. We'll keep that together. All right. So that's that. Oh, back to headlines. What did we do? Oh, we do need to make a replacement here. Um, let's put in... Who is that? Anyways, Brooke is a two-way, so it doesn't really matter who we put in. I don't think we have any other prospects that need to play. So let's put in a Siegenthaler. Does that help? That is fine. Siegenthaler and Brooke. So there we go. We made the trade for Rasmus Sandin, although it didn't really help chemistry-wise. It it may help future chemistry if we do change the coach around, but I think a, a nice young prospect defenseman uh, or young defenseman is, is really good for this team, especially like Honka, negative 14. It just didn't look like he was going to get any better because it just kept declining, and it, it does need to help with the current way of things. Are We went from a big winning streak to a mediocre uh, month after, so hopefully this next month is even better. So you know what? We're in the, into the trade deadline month, and it's the game before the deadline against the Leafs. So let's sim up to that point and see how our team does. I'm praying for good things. Please let that trade work out. And two wins. Okay, so so far so good. Two big wins against uh, the Phoenix Coyotes in, uh, or Phoenix, Arizona Coyotes. God, I always want to say Phoenix Coyotes. Jersey Devils, but we do lose to Buffalo and Florida. Yikes. So two and two and two and three. Yeah. Come on, guys. Come on. Snap out of it. Help out the team. Oh, God. Another big loss. This might be one of those. This might be one of those simulations where we stop it. Yeah, there's another loss here. There's a win. Come on, we need we need big wins here against Boston and Pitts. Big wins here. Big wins here. Wins and loss. Okay, so come on, continue. Win it. Win it. There we go. Get the thirty. I don't, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not happy with the record right now. Am not happy with the record right now. We do need to improve on that. So come on, let's get some wins here. Game against Montreal, six four. Okay. Game against Philly, we can win this one. Come on, boys. Lost like ga competitive games. We it's the it's the ga the competitive games when we lose it is not a good look because that's not going to help for the playoffs. So almost up to the deadline here. 
OT loss to the Rangers, Columbus at home, and we lose to them at home. So we're here up to the deadline um, against the Toronto Maple Leafs, who basically almost have the same record as us. But second place in the Pacific Division, right behind the Oilers, but we are far ahead of the Canucks, which is great to see against our rivals. Uh, where are the Leafs anyways? Wow, the Leafs are <laughs> with almost the same record as us, but they have a wild card spot in the East. So luckily our division is the way it is. But at the deadline, Besser with 75 points. Guy is probably on pace for close to 100, so that is good to see. Uh, Lana and Strom also there too, leading the way. This is what you like to see out of your first line is the production like that. Bootlin up to 30 goals too. I mean 29, but still... That's a good look as well. Hopefully he gets to at least close to 50. I would love to see that. Tokarski with 42 points. Bjorkstrand 39. Yep, yep, yep. How did the fourth line do? Okay, so they've improved on their plus minus, and they're actually producing. Which is, it's still incredible to see. Uh, defensemen. All right, so Nurse is now a negative five. But Sandine, let's just see how he's done since joining the team. He's actually been a plus 11 in 20 games. 12 points. So definitely a significant improvement from uh, Honka. He's actually got two winning goals and a power play point. So this is actually a significant improvement from, uh, uh, sorry, Julius Honka. So uh, that is good to see. That is good to see. Goalie-wise, how are we doing here? Above 900 save percentage. Still like it to be a little bit more higher. Goals against average is all right. Zarkov kind of having a struggling year as a backup Hopefully, maybe a boost over the offseason helps him with that. Um, I do. Hang on. I do want to see something. Uh, what's the Zark? Okay, Zark has that like normal goalie height. Maybe it's still a little bit tad short, but 6'1 is okay. Um, let's take a quick look at the AHL. Anyone looking like they've improved? So, Radulov with 76 points there. They're actually looking like they're having a struggling season based on the plus and minuses there. So, yikes. Um, not a good look in the AHL right now. It doesn't really help with the growth. But Pellage up to 37 points is good. Yankman with 17. But yeah, it doesn't look like there's a lot of growth. Flurry is actually struggling in the AHL big time. Yikes. Um, good thing he's on the decline. Um, NHL, I think we're good for stats there. So, we're up at the deadline, guys. I've shown you guys the stats. I'll show you guys the lines really quick. You guys let me know what you think we should be doing at the deadline. Should we go in buying? Should we go in selling? What do you think we should do? There is our lineup there. I don't really want to replace the first line. I kind of want to keep them the same. But the bottom nine, you guys are free to say what you will. Kind of want to keep the fourth line as well. So maybe just line two and three. Those are what we have. And I'll show you guys their stats really quickly. There's Bootland, Tokarski, Guryanov, and then Bjorkstrand. Pedersen and Nicholas Johansson. So you guys let me know what changes you want offensively. Defensively, I think we'll be okay. Um, I think everyone is producing well, so I don't think we need to change anything defensively uh, otherwise. So you guys let me know. Leave me down in your comments below. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll be back with some more content for you guys. Hopefully get some more Draft the Glory series and more of this series with the Seattle Kraken. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time.